podcast of the mind that once lived the king of the present moment. Christmas Day was nigh, and the king was practicing walking meditation when the jester approached him. My king, my king, please listen. I have heard a wonderful story yesterday. I learned about a country of the future with a pure land. This pure land is made of gold and precious jewels. And there is no suffering. Imagine that, please, oh king. Can we go? Can we go? We could even bring precious Christmas gifts. The king, touched by the plea of the jester, agreed to go on this adventure. Of course, the fact that he was bored with the present moment had nothing to do with it. The Christmas preparations continued in the castle with joy and excitement. The cook was preparing a fantastic meal with recently discovered homemade vegan meat and cheese. And the maid was decorating the Christmas tree and making sure everything was spick and span. And the butler? He was just busy with being important and giving people orders. Besides normal guests, in those days the poor and destitute would come on Christmas to ask for the best food and drinks. Christmas arrived and this king was still not back, but the feast had been fully prepared and the first guest knocked on the door. The butler opened the door and found the son of the mayor and greeted him. <laughs> and behind him, the smelly poor butler children arrived too and they started singing a song. <laughs> the herald angel Sing. The butler shouted at him, Yes, yes, Christmas, wonderful. Please stop singing. You can have your food. And ushered them to the dining hall. <laughs> the butler heard a loud sound. and went to the door and found the old hag of the village. All knew it, she was a witch, and rumor had it that she had turned her husband into a frog. Ah, ah, the best food in town. I could smell it from miles away. Feed me and my frog, I say. The butler, with disgust in his heart, cursed his absent king and showed her inside. It was already quite a carnival, with the children being chaotic around the table. And the old witch staring them down. The cook kept on bringing food while mumbling. All the things I do for others. Why does nobody ever see me? The maid, her eyes were getting bigger and bigger. 
Seeing how the mess increased, confused she looked around, not knowing what to do or say. Suddenly, a terrible smell came down in the dining hall. The witch yelled at the children. Have you no manners? How dare you, little rascals? But then, a green figure appeared out of the dark. The figure growled, and a green monster walked in. The butler, seeing this abomination, got very frightened and thought, No! No! How can you be here? I left my demons of the past behind. Has the country of the past finally started their retaliation? I knew I was not safe in the present moment. Have I not lived a virtuous life? Didn't I offer the leftover food to those ungrateful children in the orphanage? As the king demanded me to do. Sometimes, even in my spare time. The monster sat down at the head of the table and the butler shouted. How dare you come here? You are not welcome in the present moment. And the monster grew bigger and bigger. The butler shouted to the cook, You! Do something! Get him out of here! And the monster started eating as a beast, making the whole table a mess. The cook, seeing this ravenous eater, thought, Oh my goodness, he will have eaten everything soon. Let's get him more food. Maybe he will be satisfied and go away. And ran to the kitchen while thinking, Why does this always happen to me? And the monster kept on growing. The maid had seen the butler assaulting the monster and had come quite upset and looked at the monster. She said to herself, This is not happening. This is of no importance to me. And she ran away to her room where she made herself her favorite instant noodle. She lit a candle and started humming Christmas songs. Oh, Christmas tree. While pretending this was all not happening and definitely not of her concern. The monster, seeing the maid abandoning him, exploded like a balloon. <laughs> the situation was getting out of hand. But luckily, at that moment, the king arrived back in the castle of the mind. His quest for the pure land in the country of the future had not led him anywhere. And finally he came back empty-handed. Mindfully, the king walked into the dining chamber and observed the scene. With a big smile, he bowed to the monster and said, Oh, welcome, my dear friend. I am so happy to see you. And sat down next to him. I see that you are in pain. Please, speak to me. Tell me, how do you feel? I am here for you. The monster, surprised by this kindness, looked the king in the eye and said, I am so ugly and disgusting. Nobody wants to be my friend. And they 
are always mean to me and they chase me away. You are the first who really sees me. And the monster started to softly weep. The king, in his generous compassion, embraced this pain as a mother would embrace her baby and felt the pain of the monster as himself. Dwelling together in this mindful embrace, the king said, My dear friend, you are beautiful just as you are, and you are my precious guest who deserves all of my attention. And with this, the monster became calmer and calmer. The butler, cook and maid, touched by these words, felt ashamed, while kindness bloomed in their hearts. With canned eyes, the king looked up and said, Dear butler, we have a distinguished guest. Please ask the maid to prepare the most beautiful bed later on. And ask the cook and all guests to come around the table to eat this festive meal. Tonight is a night of celebration. And as the night progressed, the monster grew smaller and smaller and smaller. And the atmosphere grew happier and happier. This is how the story ends. The harmony was restored. The king now realized that his true home was being fully present in the country of the present moment. The monster became a full-time member of the castle of the mind and everyone accepted him just as he was and they lived happily ever after. Oh, thank you, thank you.